Hey, what's up everybody, Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to cut down your music clip using Adobe Audition's Remix feature. And now, why would you wanna use this? Because Adobe Audition remixes it in a way that it actually analyzes the choruses, the loops, and it re-loops it for you automatically. And so what I'm talking about is, so for example, right here, we have this, this piece of music that is about three minutes long, but we only edited a clip that's about a minute long. And so what we want it to do, I mean, we want it to start at the natural beginning and end at the natural end. It just makes it feel better. So we could, you know, cut it where we think a good transition might be, maybe like where the, uh, the audio drops, and then try to dr find some other place to cut it in. We could do it manually, that's what I'm saying. And we can do that, but it takes a lot of time, and a lot of times it'll come out pretty, I don't know, crappy. Uh, I've done it in the past, and it's taken me a lot of iterations to get something that sounds good. And the exact inverse is true. If we have our clip that's way too long and audio that's way too short, and it's a loop, and we want it to keep looping, then we have to do that ourselves. And that can get a little tedious, and we can mess up the loop. So what I'm going to be showing you is how to use Adobe Audition to do this automatically using an algorithm that's going to give you a lot of control and allow you to adjust the time of a piece of music and it'll remix it to the exact time you need. Really awesome effect, so let's get started. First thing you wanna do is you wanna actually have the sequence ready. Now we could right click on this right here and then we could go up to edit clip and audition and it's gonna send this clip there, but we don't want the clip there. We want to send the entire composition there. And that's because it'll give us a lot more wiggle room and we can actually see the video to make sure that it's working out correctly. So we're gonna go up to clip and then, or my bad, edit, and then we're going to go into the edit in Adobe Audition and then sequence right here. Uh, I didn't update to the newest audition, so it's warning me about that. If they're all up to date, it should work. Yeah, anyway, so what we're doing is we're opening it up in Audition. Our selection, we want the entire sequence in here. Video, we wanna send it through the dynamic link so that uh, when we're inside of Audition, we can actually see it. Audio clips, render them all out. Basically, the default settings for this are fine. If you need to change something, you'll know that you need to change it. So we're gonna click okay, yeah, it already exists. So we're gonna go over right. And then now it's going to open up Adobe Audition like you see right here. It's gonna open it up just like this. And it'll probably have history open instead of video down here. So if you wanna see your video, just have the window video and you know, you can move it. If you have a second screen, you can drag it to the right so you can see it over there. You can drag it up to where you want, rearrange things. It's, it's an Adobe product, you can do all this stuff. But you'll see that when I move across, the video plays right here. Now, if I go up to the here, I can scroll on my uh, windows, not my windows, my mouse here, and I can actually zoom out and kind of see the entire comp. You can also do the same with this right here. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this piece of footage and I wanna cut it down to right here and I wanna have it remixed for me. And you'll see that if I like uh, zoom into the comp a little bit, I'm holding control to sort of make everything a little bigger. I could maybe click on this clip, I don't know, drop it down to here, but you see it's a direct cut. And so the ending just kill, dies. I mean, that's not very interesting. That's not what we want it to do. What we need to do is remix it. So we're gonna click on this. We're gonna go into the properties over here. So maybe media browsers open or effects rack, or maybe properties isn't open or video isn't open. They're all right here in the window. So make sure you get to the properties tab. Once you're in the properties tab, you'll see that there's a bunch of different settings here. We wanna skip the first three and we wanna go straight down to remix. We're gonna open that up and we're gonna click enable remix and you'll see that it goes busy and it starts analyzing it. Now, what it's doing is it's figuring out where the loops are, where could it loop. Um, it's analyzing frequencies, doing all that stuff, math related stuff to figure out how it could best remix this for you. Longer the clip, longer this is gonna take, but you'll see that it's a decent sized clip and it only took about 30 seconds. And you know, the slower your computer, it'll probably take a little longer as well. So now what we wanna do is we actually wanna take this and we want to not drag it so that we have this symbol right here. See that how it looks the same in Adobe Audition as it does in Premiere? We don't want that. We wanna drag up just a little bit and you'll see right here where it does the cross. That means we're gonna start a remix. So we wanna drag that to the end of our composition. So let's move this out of the way so it doesn't jump to it. We're trying to make it jump to the very end here. So we're gonna click this, drag it in, and you will see right like that, it remixes it. Now you might be thinking, what's going on? It just looked like it cut it down, but you'll see that it has the ending and it has the beginning, and then it remixed a part into the middle so that it all flows together. And what's like really, really neat is I'm holding control or, uh, whoops, control here, and I'm zooming in a little bit so we can see this a little bit better uh, with my mouse wheel. You can see that there's these squiggly lines and that's where it made the cuts and it all looks like one fluid piece. So let's test it out. Let's see if we can notice the loop in between 
of what it just did. It, it's, it's amazing how it can do this. You notice that it didn't even like cut. All you heard was like one extended note. So it found that note in two different places of it and it cut it together into one continuous note so that it just kept going and rolling into the next part. And the exact same right here. That is not how it was originally. It's supposed to slowly build up to this, but it actually made it go into a fast buildup so that it sped the clip up and then now it ends right where it's supposed to. Just an amazing thing, and I've actually only recently found out about this, and I've been using it a lot because it is just so awesome to do. So let's say your remix didn't come out the exact way you wanted. Let's go into that scenario. So right here, um, if you want to change the target duration a little bit, so what it's doing is it's going plus or five seconds to this time. So I made it go to 52 seconds, which is how long this composition is, which means it could come up with one that's 48 seconds or one that's 57 seconds or 47 seconds. Uh, it could come up with five seconds either way. And that's because it, to get the algorithm working, it needs a little wiggle room. It can't be perfect. So it's going to try to extend it a little bit, you know, get it all working right. If you want it to be exact, you could stretch to an exact duration and make it force it to go to that dura duration. Quality might be lowered, but sometimes you need that to happen. Now in our advanced tab, we can actually edit some things. So um, if the edit length right here, what we're doing is if I lower this down, it's going to cut in a lot more edits you see right here. So it's going to overall, I would say average it out a little bit better um, instead of this. So when we did this long one right here, you see that it cut it into three sections. And that's why we kind of went from this soft to a really fast sharp because this buildup was probably happening over, I don't know, maybe a minute and it cut out really quick into the next one. So that's why the buildup happened. If we wanted to slow that down, we could drag this out and you can kind of see that the buildup's a little bit slower here now because it's cutting more and more into it. But it can also increase the chance of glitching, of uh, different sounds and some really weird transitions in there. So kind of move this around, get it to work how you want to. This one is kind of focusing on the different characteristics of the sound. Um, so if you want it to, it's a little complicated, but if you want to like focus basically on harmonics or timbre, you can move this around, it's going to change what the cut point is going to be, where it decides that it needs to cut it at. I think that's the best way to describe it. If you don't really understand like a lot of sound engineering stuff and you can't get it to work on any of the other ones, just drag this around and see if it sounds better. That's basically the, the practical way of using that. Um, the next one is what is our minimum length and what is our maximum slack, which is the if we can read it right here, the slack setting determines the amount of time the remix clips duration may deviate from the requested duration. So this is just the plus or minus right here. We can make it go really, really like, see now it says plus or minus 27 seconds. So it already, you know, went really, really far. So if we back this off right here, we can make it go lower and give more or less slack here. And then the minimum loop is if we incre or decrease this down to short ones, short little segments, How what's the minimum that it can do? So is it gonna go like one beat, then switch to another one, one beat and switch to another one? We can change that around if we want, again, to control the sound in this. But that is really it on the Remax, the Remix tab. Okay, so now that we're finished, let's get this back into Premiere Pro. What we need to do is we actually need to go up here into multi-track and then export to Premiere Pro. So we have to actually re-export this back into Premiere Pro. We're gonna then go down to Mix Down Session 2 and then into a stereo file. And we're gonna make sure it's clicked open in Adobe Premiere Pro. We're gonna go ahead and click that OK button. It's going to take it, it's going to export it back in here and let's just make it a new audio track. So it's gonna copy it into the active sequence. And you'll see that the new version that we've created is right here. Now it's not gonna grab all the the video and stuff like that because that was just dynamically linked. So it was just a temporary file. What we were really working on is the end result. So it's going to export the entirety of that end result back to here. Now be cautious because it's going to take this piece as well. So if you didn't want like um, that other audio in there, you could delete all of the, you know, the, the video audio out. So you're only working on the sound of the music right here. So let's go back into here. So we're then going to delete our old music and you'll see 
we have our new music added back into Premiere Pro. And just like that, we have taken it, we have remixed it, sent it to, or sent it to Adobe Audition, remixed it, and brought it all the way back into Premiere Pro. And we have a beautiful piece of music to work with. That is about it on this tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys can get some you know, really good fun and value out of this sort of effect. It's really awesome and it's not talked about a lot, so I wanted to kind of share it with you guys. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you want to see more videos similar to this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I like to post every other day uh, Adobe related stuff in the video realm, so After Effects and Premiere Pro. If you got a question or comment or you got a suggestion for a future tutorial, throw those in the comments below. And until next time, guys.